Hello and welcome to this edition of Dr. Clark Reports. I'm your host, Dr. Gary Clark, and my guest is my friend Ming Tang Nguyen, who is the executive director of Vela. And yes, sir, greetings and welcome, my friend. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes, and uh, you're the executive director of Vela, and I know it's, it's an acronym. It's an acronym that, uh, that, that, that has evolved. So tell us about Vela and, what, uh, and the emergence and development of this organization. So Vela, we, uh, we started off right after Hurricane Katrina, um, and it was because uh, of a landfill that was placed in our community. Um, there was a lot of trash and debris, and the city was trying to figure out where to put the trash. And, um, and there was a company that, you know, conveniently put together this, um, this uh, area for the trash to go to. And, um, you know, we were called, like the young people were called upon uh, to, to, to help the community. So, um, so that's where I was called on to come in, and actually, I actually founded the organization and um, organized yes, the community, yes. um, got the young people to come together, and, um, and we fought. We, we advocated, we organized, and we made sure that this landfill was going to be closed um, so we could have a, a better community, a better future. And, 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 and back then, um, we started off working with Vietnamese folks, Vietnamese young, youth. And um, down the line, uh, we, we have evolved. And um, now we serve not only the Vietnamese community, but also the African American and Latino community as well. So. Right, so at the, at the core of the, of the acronym, it was Vietnamese. Yeah, Vietnamese American Americans. Young Leaders Association. Yes. And it's interesting how that you would evolve from at the core from Vietnamese Americans, and then you became more inclusive. Correct. And, and that served as your base, and it's worked out pretty well for you, has it not? Yeah, yeah, it's yes. a beautiful thing for us. Um, most, a lot, all of our events. Uh, I think we're one of the few organizations that have a multi-racial, multicultural um, uh, feel to it. Um, we do have, you know, African American staff, Latina staff. Uh, Vietnamese staff as well, and actually the Caucasian Jewish staff. Um, oh yes. Yeah, so it's pretty. It's pretty diverse. Um, our board is also diverse, and our membership obviously reflects that. So. And you uh, at uh, in Michu, on Michu Boulevard in New Orleans is is where you're centrally located. Correct. Uh, it's on the corner of Michu and Chefman Tour. Yes. Now uh, you you know through the development and emergence of this, what what you what you, you develop. The organization, your nonprofit, it developed through civic engagement, mm -hmm. community activism. Uh, what what do you see that it brought about its own synergy took took place? Did it not? Yeah. And, yeah. and how did that synergy just? How did? What was the process that made that 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 made the the organization just evolve like that? Um, for us, I, th I believe the reason why is because, like yes, like you said earlier, it, it, we have to be inclusive. It's a, it's a, it's a bottom-up approach, right? We make sure that everybody is a part of the process, right? Everybody who um, have certain issues that's very common with everybody. It's like just it's common issues, right? Uh, we're coming together because of um, a reason why everybody believes. So it, it. wasn't personality-driven; it was issue-oriented. It's issue-oriented, and I think yeah, uh, there's you know there's some personality in there as well. <laughs> okay, you know I just I mean? want to know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, because I, I mean, I, I am born and raised in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I was all, I'm fortunate that I was able to attend schools where it was um, racially diverse. You know, so um, I, I'm, I've, I have you know, um, I've been able to um, learn. Uh, and, and, and adopt, or not not learn, but just like growing up in the environment where like, yeah, I, I, I can uh, talk to, I could understand and relate to African American folks and Latino folks and be able to um, get them to understand that, hey, you know, we're, we, we're, we're all part of New Orleans and we need to be able to work together, right? So. Right, and, and you're, uh, you, you do the, the support services. When you t talk about support services, I know it's broad, yeah. but, but what, 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 what are we talking about? When we say supportive services, we believe that, so we, we started off doing community organizing work, right? Activism, advocacy, civic engagement. That's, that's, that's our core. Like, we, we do that really well. And then when we, when we well, since we do that so well, um, we, 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 we start to see that um, you can't have an amazing, strong advocate or av uh, uh, activist if we don't support them on, on an individual basis as well. So that's what we that's what we understand. Like you know, we have to have a, a, a holistic approach, right? Um, 
So to so give an example, we had a we had a, a, a amazing young young men and women that we helped to become amazing leaders. But they went home to a, a they went back home to a broken family. Okay. You you understand like where there was like very few food on the table. Um, some of them were going through a lot of depression because of the Hurricane Katrina and losing families or friends, you know, being displaced, all that good stuff. Well, we we had to make sure that they, that we support them as a whole and not just as an as a, as a, as a leader. Now, so, the SASU organizations, uh, I know we talked off camera, say uh, around 2,000 that you that you can identify, but even long, larger than that. Yes. 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 I, I mean, that's that's basically you know. We, 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 want to, we want to uh, be able to serve them in all capacity, right? Uh, from recreational, that's one of the big things, is recreational. Young people love being, being involved, you know, playing sports, dance, you know, uh -oh. doing arts. Those are the things that, you know, um, that's maj majority of our membership comes from that. And through the recreation where they, they develop bonds, friendships, mm -hmm. and, and then Discipline, you share Discipline, teamwork. Mm -hmm. All that. That's. It's really important that that we do that. You know, before K Hurricane Katrina, you knew. I mean, we we hear a lot of like the the gang violence, the the fights that happens in New Orleans East. But I think it's be, it was because of the lack of opportunities for them to do things, right? Especially around like sports. And because we 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 have sporting programs, they're coming together and uh, and, and and playing with each other on the field instead of like fighting on the streets. And you know, it's through recreation and sports that you bond and, and build long-lasting relationships. Right. And, and that's what uh, the community itself has been about historically. And, and you're bringing about a new energy in terms of this, yes? Yes, yes, definitely. We bring in an innovative approach, a youth approach, an approach that, you know, young people um, have a voice and we also um, are, are stakeholders, right? We want to be invested in. Uh, and we want we want a better future for New Orleans and for those who are coming after us as well. Now I know you also engage in cultural awareness. Correct, correct. We believe like for this month, obviously, you know, Black History Month, we, we will be doing a lot of stuff and making sure that it, our young black men and women understand where they came from. You know, I think right now that's one of the big push that we're hoping uh, in the next um, few years is to to push for ethnic studies. For, for folks to understand where they came from, their roots, the struggles that you know their ancestors and their grandparents have gone through to be where we're at today, you know so that's really right. important to us right now. Um, not not only that, uh, the the Vietnamese and Chinese Lu Lunar New Year uh, just passed, and this weekend we actually have a huge um, festival that's going to happen. So it's just things like that that we want to embrace who we are, right? even though we are. We're coming together as an organization. Uh, we also embrace the, the differences um, of each other. And, and that's well. the beauty of the, of, uh, of the New Orleans experience. That's right. And that's the beauty of, of the experience of our community. That's right. Now, uh, I know you also host, uh, you also host um, uh, political forums to make mm -hmm. individuals aware of politics, and so they can engage mm -hmm. civically, so they can so they can become part of the, of the political marketplace. That's right. How, how has that been through, and throughout uh, this past election period? Yeah, for, I mean, for us, um, we believe that uh, in order for us to have power, we must vote, right? Um, our vote is our voice. Oh, yes. Right, and it, in order to do that, we have to just, we have to become civically engaged. And it doesn't, I mean, it's not, it's not only through voting, right? It has to be just through every, any political process. Right. If there's around like city budgeting, if there's anything around um, uh, any any public hearing, you know, I think and I believe that we must be engaged, we must be involved, must, must give input uh, because of this is a democratic country, right? Right. And we need to practice that. How how do the candidates resp candidates respond to you when you in invite them out to sort of say you want to survey them and see what they're thinking? How do they sur how do they respond? To you know, you? I I believe that I mean from the response that I, I've heard so far is that yes, they're really excited, they're really happy that not only young people are coming together, but like it's young and old, not only young and old, but there's there, there's black, white, 
Asian folks are coming together, and, and it doesn't happen in, in right. a lot and of this, places. And this is not some Pepsi, excuse me, some Coca-Cola commercial. This is this is pragmatic, real activity yep. that's, that is taking place in our community. That's right. And, and in fact, uh, you, you were just recognized uh, just recently by the community for a better new audience. That's right. And that's uh, right. What, what did they say about you when, when you, they selected you, you know, as I, one I, of the up-and-coming uh, leaders in this process? Yes. We were very honored. Um, to receive the Diana Lewis Award, um, for us, you know, she she represents that. I mean, she we want to be a Diana Lewis, um, and 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 for us, you know, the the way how the way what what they say is because of our activism work, the fact that we believe in young people and giving them the opportunity to be engaged and being involved, you know, to to make sure that we are able to create the future that we want. And, um, and I think that's, that's what we stand for, and we want to continue to strive for that, and, and making sure that we're, we are very inclusive, you know. Now, how do you select your, your leadership, uh, excuse me, your membership? Do you, uh, do you actively go and seek them out, or they come to you? How? You know, we, yes. um, for the past um, eight years, um, it, people have been coming to us. Um, they've been coming to us because we are that safe space safe space for our community. You could come to us for, for, for a variety of, of issues or anything that you want to, if you want to volunteer, you know, um, to be, just to do anything, you know, we, we're, we are that space for, for, for the community. And no, we don't, we don't select our um, <laughs> membership. Um, as long as you want to be involved, you want to be engaged, and then you believe that young people and the people voice, um, believe that um, it, it needs to be a, 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 a real process, a democratic process, and, and I think that's, that's the, the basis of that. Well, if there is a, a prototype, I don't know if there is or is not, but uh, tell us about uh, the prototypical member and also the prototypical, if, if, we, if, we, if I can say this for lack of a better term, uh, uh, staff person with you, the, the person that volunteers to work with Vela. Yes. Yeah. So our staff members, uh, we, again, like we have a very diverse staff. Uh, we have young, uh, we have you know middle-aged folks um, that 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 really cares, that believe that the community um, have a voice, and and, and the fact that um, everybody deserve um, an opportunity to be a part of any process, right? Um, that we we just we need to come together. That's the big thing. And my our staff, we believe that that everybody has some type of leadership within them. They have some type of power um, within them, and we just have to um, let, get them to reach their potential. The, yes. To reach their potential, and, and that's, that's what we all want. Mm -hmm. And so when you get these young people and they come, uh, and they, they, they learn about one another, mm -hmm. do they? Oh, they, yeah. they learn about one another. And give right. us a case uh, in point where you, where you saw something, where you said, you know what, this is a, this is a significant, this is a, 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 a Peaking point for me, a point that you say, "All right, I like this." Yeah, yeah. I mean, for us, I mean, for me, um, I think one of the not peaking point. I'm, yes. I wish I have. I, I, I hope <laughs> I haven't done that yet. Uh, I, I have still a long yeah, way to go. We don't want to peak too soon. Oh yeah. yeah. We. Um, I think for me, I believe that. I mean, one of the one of the instances uh, we have this young uh, African American male. Um, he well, uh, he was a, a high school student, and. He, um, he's not, um, he, he basically believed that his school shouldn't be shut down. Um, so we, could, we have an issue right now with Sarah Tariq High School um, being, uh, being closed down right now. And um, this young man, he, he was like saying that, you know, um, I, I, I love my school. I, I love my alma mater. And I want to be able to do something for my community. So this is not only for me, but this is for my little brothers and sisters, right? Right. And this is, you're talking about, you know, a, a, a 16, 17 year old male, a black male yes. in this community. And you know how New Orleans portray our young black men right now. And for me to see um, this young man um, taking leadership and saying that I want, I want to, 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 to play a part in this, not only for me, but for everybody. Everybody in this community, and I'm not going. I'm not going to stop. And, and when is, is there a point when someone leaves your program and comes back, or once you're in, you're you're in? You know, um, yes. that's that's a <laughs> that's an interesting question. Um, yes, I mean, I think uh, Vela is a home 
just like everybody, like just like your regular home. You could leave to go to college. You could leave to go to another state, but we're always here, right? You can always come back, um, and we will always, you know, welcome those who who enter onto our space. Yeah. And, and, and that's the beauty of the system, that, and that's great in what you have and what you want. And, and that's part of, I would, I would think, what you bring to the table with Vela. And I know you also work with universities as well right. and corresponding universities. And so that's, that, that's important, it's the fact important. That, you, that you go out there and, and you go out and, and touch hands with, with every, all of the various institutions in our community. Your, your personality of leadership as a young leader, what is your personality that you bring to the table? You know, my, my yes. I want to say just, you know, all of us, we have to be very real, right? We have to have compassion. We have to um, believe in ourselves and, and have confidence. Uh, I think, you know, I was not trained to be an executive director. And I, I mean, I, I, uh, I, I have a, a, a degree in, um, in business and marketing and management, but you know, running a nonprofit is, is very difficult. You know, and one of the things that um, I keep in mind is that as long as I'm doing the right thing, things will be good. Things Absol will go well. Absolutely. Right? And then being able to consult with the people, right? Go into the people and say, what do you think? Is this the right choice? And help make these decisions that I have to make on a daily basis, right? These 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 critical decisions that um, that I'm called to to make. But I think for me, um, making sure that people are included um, in in the process, and then making sure that um, that it's it's ethical, you know, it's right. Uh, the, and I, I, t I tell a lot of my friends and my colleagues that you know, as long as I could sleep at night, I'm, I'm fine with the decision. Beautiful, and absolutely, and, that's, and that is indeed what you want in a leader. And again, I would like to remind my viewing audience that I'm Gary Clark, and I'm speaking with, with my friend Ming Tang Nguyen, who is the executive director of Vela. And I know that uh, you're a native of the, of the, uh, the city, but would you please tell my viewing audience, mm -hmm. the Ming Tang Wen story. Yes, sir. Where did you go to school? Where you grew? Where you grew yeah. up? The whole bit. Yes. Yeah, well, I was born and raised in New Orleans East. I was born in Charity Hospital, um, and uh, my 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 parents were uh, refugees uh, from Vietnam. I was uh, raised in the the uh, the Versailles Arms uh, projects, uh, the section uh, section eight housing projects, and. Uh, from there, um, I was able to go to school at Debore and then St. Lawrence and then uh, Holy Cross High School. I, went, I was able to, fortunately, fortunately went to high, Holy Cross High School and then I was able to move on to Loyola University in New Orleans. Um, from there, you know, through my whole process and people saw something in me, um, saw some type of leadership within myself and was able to um, help me bring that potential out of myself as well. Um, at Loyola University, I was able to uh, build up my racial conscious, my social justice consciousness, and then being able to um, to to share, um, to organize um, the community. And I think you know, uh, I and I think because we're from New Orleans, <laughs> yes, um, the the Southern hospitality that we <laughs> uh, that that is instilled within us, um, all of that mixed with each other, um, it makes me who I am. You know, I, and I, I, I love New Orleans, um, and, and I, I continue to, to, to be here and to help our community and our city be a better, better city. What was your major again at, at, um, at Loyola? Yeah. Uh, it's uh, business, uh, marketing and management, yeah, and a degree in business. And that fits, and you saw how that fit well in terms of your nonprofit that you... Yeah, because, yes. you know, I, the, the nonprofit, uh, is, is, is run, I mean, we run it like a real business. You know, the only thing, the difference is that we, at the end of the year, you know, the, the, the extra money rolls over. It doesn't go into my pocket. It doesn't go to anybody's pocket. It goes back to the community, right? It goes back to the organization to serve the community. So I, I mean, we run it like that. And, um, yeah, I, I'm, really, I'm really happy that I, I got that degree and I got that type of um, um, experience uh, along the way. Who were some of your influences? My influence. uh, Professional and personal influences, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, for my my influence or like my coaches, you know, it's you know a lot of folks uh, need to understand that like being involved in sports, 
Um, they taught me discipline. They taught me that not, never to give up, never to give up. So um, I have Coach Scyther from Holy Cross. Um, I had, um, and also um, uh, a nun, uh, Sister Anne Marie, um, Kung Marie uh, Wen. She, she, she was one of the ones who actually picked me out of everybody. <laughs> I was one of the bad kids when I was growing up. But he, she picked me out. She said, Ming, I want you to represent our church. I want you to represent our young people of our church. And I was like, you serious? Me? <laughs> so I'm the bad kid. Yeah, but, but I didn't That's tell amazing. her that. Right? I didn't tell her that. <laughs> but, um, but to her, um, she saw something in me, and she believed in me, and she helped me grow as, as a leader. Uh, and, and she, you know, this, this, this sister continued to be a part of my life. Uh, and I'm really happy that that she she helped me through along the way. And then you know, obviously, you know, there's there's other folks along the way. Um, you know, I I I um, I listen to you know I, I tell folks that you know I'm I'm the the Vietnamese Martin Luther King, right? <laughs> Junior, right? Um, I believe that uh, we need to come together. And I kind of I mean I do follow his. His, 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 his mission and his dream. Mission. Yes. Yeah, that's the reason why, you know, Vela is the way how it is. That's why we are very inclusive. We, we believe that the people need to come together to work together. And, uh, and, I, and that's, that's my, one of my major, my, my main inspiration is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Um, and I'm hoping that I'm, I'm making him proud today uh, the way, the, the, with the work that I'm doing. So. Because you're uh, two generations away, yeah. uh, from from the keen experience, at least, right. yeah. And so, and, and we see that. And you know, uh, with what you do, mm -hmm. and and the kind of uh, participation that you bring to the community, civic, social, political participation, mm -hmm. yeah, you you see that development, and you see it growing. How do you view our community? How do you view New Orleans? I view I, a city have a lot of potential as well. Um, I think one of the things that we do have to address um, is, is, is race. Um, I, I believe that we don't talk about race enough uh, within our city. Um, it's, uh, and I think in, until we do that, and until we do that, we will be able to move forward. Um, and I, one of the things that I mentioned earlier is that I believe that we need to have ethnic studies. Um, our, our young people need to know where they came from and the struggles and the success that brought us to where we're at today, you know. Right. In order for us to vote, in order for us to be here, um, I, I believe that that history um, is not lost yet. Uh, it just needs to be taught. Uh, it needs to be shared with our our young people. And I think, you know, I, I call our um, our older generation to 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 share their experience with our young people. Uh, we need the young old folks as much as the old folks need us. <laughs> Precisely, and, and, and you are a person that through the community, growing in the community, and, and you recently married as well. That's correct, <laughs> correct. How do you yeah. feel? I, I, I feel great, <laughs> you know. Um, I have a lot of uh, friends and family that support us. I have a, a, a very supportive wife. Um, she, you know, she has to deal with a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of the things that I have to deal with, um, being, being in the position I am. But um, as long as um, she continues to support the work and believe that we, we, we can have a better city, uh, better New Orleans, um, that we could raise our kids here. And the reason I mentioned that, the fact that you recently married, mm -hmm. is because I, I want uh, our community to see that, that there is a growing community. There are those who want to raise young families in our city. And they're not engaging in this, in this flight. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this brain drain mm -hmm. where folks get educated and then they fly away and go somewhere else for, for mm -hmm. a theoretically better experiences. Yeah. And so what is the, the glue that keeps you here? The glue is that it's, it is family. Um, it is Vela, you know. It's the people. Um, I've been to other cities and I think at, at the end of the day, um, you know, I, I lived in, in uh, Los Angeles for a small period of time because during Cat Hurricane Katrina, I love the weather, don't, don't get me wrong, <laughs> um, but the people are very different. Um, here in New Orleans, um, we have that Southern uh, hospitality. We do care about each other. You could walk in the streets and if, for those who don't know you, they would say hi to you and, 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 um, and, and actually acknowledge you. 
in other parts of the cities, I don't think that's the that's the truth. It's not the norm. I've tried so place. many times. I, I walk <laughs> down uh, Washington D.C. and try to say hi to every single person, and only uh, I, I say within from uh, Dupont Circle to where I need my 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 meeting, I say hi to almost 17 people. Only three people acknowledge me. All right. So. Um, I had that same experience when I first moved to Washington. Yeah, I, it was, I yeah. was like, oh, 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 okay, so I'm wearing myself out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, I think here in New Orleans, I think it's a little different. I think the people, um, you know, have they're, they're amazing, you know, and we we need to definitely um, embrace it. And obviously, our food uh, is, is great, but I th but at the end of the day, I think that because of my the history that we have here in New Orleans. Um, I can't. I can't lose it. I want to be here. I want to raise my kids here, and I know that we we could be one of the best cities of of this country. Um, I th but you know, one of the things that we need to do is we need to come together and 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 and, fi and fix that those th the things that are are broken. Well, you know, this is what individuals say to me. Mm -hmm. They say uh, they they ask me why is it they believe that there's voter apathy. There's a lack of uh, political participation in the way it should be. And you, you're right there uh, on, on the ground. Mm -hmm. You're at the forefront. Uh, what do you see could be some of the reasons for the lack of political participation in terms of the electoral ballot mm -hmm. uh, in our community in, to the degree that it should be? What do you, why, why voting you know, patterns have declined? Yeah, yes. I, I, it's, you know, that's one of the things that I've been trying to figure out myself. Um, I recently went to the Bahamas. Um, I went there to meet with the Prime Minister. I found out that there is 90% voter turnout. 90% voter turnout. And I was amazed, right, that so many people came out to vote. I wanted to figure out how can we do that for New Orleans, right? And I think one of the things is that New Orleans, I, I believe the voter apathy comes from what they have been seeing from our, our, our previous leaders. I mean, right now, just with, 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 with uh, our former um, mayor. Um, uh, so I, right, and I see what you're yeah. saying. The, the, the apathy is not because they don't want to vote, mm -hmm. that they perhaps don't like the choices, and that is their way of voting by not participating in those choices. Correct. Now, Correct. we have about a minute and a half remaining. I, I want to get your vision. Your vision for Vela. What do you want to carry it, under, carry it under your leadership from here? My vision is that we will able to um, get our community, the, our members, to become leaders, for them to be able to make their own decisions for their family and for themselves. Right? Um, that's that's one of the main things that we focus on. Oh yes. Um, we don't want to have to make decisions for them, and we don't want to be. Um, for them to be dependent on us either. We want them to be very independent, uh, for, to make decisions and, and to be able to voice any concerns and feel like they could do whatever they need to do. Right? To be civilly engaged, if they feel like they need to run for office, um, yes, uh, they, they need, that, that is a success story for us. Right? We want to have a, a very strong, stable foundation for our, our education. Our young people need to have a, um, an amazing education experience and our health. You know, we need to have our hospital back. We have to have state-of-the-art health facility, so our, our our community will be able to have that type of service. Um, and then just like uh, again, like civilly engaged. I want everybody, black, white, Latino, Asian, everybody, to come together to 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 be able to make the community they want. Well, you know, that's wonderful, and I want to thank you for joining me. It's been truly outstanding. Mm -hmm. and, and again, I want to thank my viewing audience for tuning in. And as always, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Yes, sir.